Hi friends, welcome to Marco Insights. This is Nidhi and in this video we are going to discuss about the great attrition. In 2022, business leaders faced an increasingly unpredictable environment with evolving return to office policies, high employee turnover and burnout employees. Despite a softening economy globally, the great resignation still continues to be a challenge for most of the companies in the world. As per a recent survey conducted by PwC, one out of four employees said that they are going to change their jobs or they are looking to change their jobs in the next 12 months. In 2022, the year of great resignation, actually this figure was only 19%. The survey was conducted with 54,000 workers across 46 countries. Now, what are the reasons why, why do people want to quit their current companies in the next 12 months? The top two reasons that were identified was that 44% of workers said that they are overworked, whereas 38% of them said that they are not earning enough. They are not able to pay their monthly bills even. According to this study and several others conducted in recent past, it is safe to say that in 2023 also, companies continue to face the challenge of competitive talent landscape, exhausted workforce and the pressure to control the costs. According to Harrison HR, the cost of replacing an existing employee is around 30 to 150 percent of their salaries. Factor in the cost of hiring the employee, inducting and training the employee and then the administration cost attached with uh, terminating the existing employee. Also, don't forget about the soft cost that is attached with the new hire getting accustomed to the culture and the work environment of your company. All these factors have a direct or indirect cost implication on the company. Hence, to be able to retain a good employee is a better option than hiring a new one. So the situation is that people are quitting at record levels and companies are still using the traditional levers to attract and retain people. What we see here is a fundamental mismatch of companies' demand of talent and the supply of right people who are able and willing to provide this talent to the company. Now the traditional levers like compensation, good title and career advancement are important, but not necessarily the right levers for all type of employees. McKinsey and company actually conducted a research and found out that these workers in this dynamic workforce actually can be divided into five pools, five worker personas who have different levers different motivators and demotivators. Further in this video, we will discuss about these five worker personas and how they can be motivated or attracted by the company. But before that, let's find out what are the top factors which are driving attrition and retention in companies according to McKinsey. Let's look at the five worker personas. Number one is traditionalists. You all know traditionalists, career-oriented people who like to have a work-life balance, good perk, good salary, career advancement. They like to work full-time for big companies, but they are willing to make trade-offs for the sake of their jobs. Companies love traditionalists for the simple reason. Number one, they know all the variables in the equation. What motivates them, what demotivates them and how to find these people. All the traditional sourcing strategies or the traditional sourcing touch points, you will find traditionalists there. Traditionalists make major part of the workforce. But there's a catch. These traditionalists are scarce in number. Also, since all the variables, all the livers are known to everybody, any rival can come and offer a better compensation package or a better job title and take them away from you. Number two is the do-it-yourselfers. These are 25 to 45 years of men and women who are self-employed or are full-time employees somewhere or they are doing some gig work or part-time work. Uh, and what motivates them is number one, the workplace flexibility. Number two, meaningful work. And number three, compensation. 
so compensation is not on the top of the list but workplace flexibility is now these were the motivators what are the demotivators for these employees number 1 toxic managers number 2 rigid workplaces number 3 not having something uh, meaningful to do so there is no purpose in the job now it is very difficult to attract and retain these employees i'll tell you why because companies have to offer something better than these employees or workers can create by themselves these are do it yourselfers like they can create money or they can create value by themselves if you are offering compensation you have to offer better compensation than what they are making already if you are offering work you have to offer a work that brings purpose to them if you are not able to provide these things to this cohort they are not going to stay long with you for example airbnb ceo brian chesky announced that company's employees will be able to work from anywhere and abolish the idea of location based pay in the days after his announcement airbnb's recruitment page received more than a million visitors number 3 is caregivers 18 to 44 years of age more women less men these are the people who are at home taking care of somebody at home probably children or parents these people actually care about compensation but workplace flexibility is a major concern but they are also interested in career advancement they are looking for support from the companies to take care of their responsibilities outside the job they want their children or parents to be taken care of or uh, get help uh, for the daily household chores to retain these employees part time working flexible work hours four day work week or better benefit packages can be provided example google and cisco offer employee benefits such as on site child care physical therapy and subsidized house cleaning services number 4 the idealist students and part time workers ranging from age 18 to 24 years their priorities their motivators career development advancement potential meaningful work number 4 being able to be a part of a resilient and reliant community for attracting and retaining these employees companies basically have to present their value proposition as having a dynamic and diverse workforce a strong organizational culture and good career advancement opportunities number 5 is the relaxers the cohort of early retirees or uh, people who retired at the natural age but have a lot of uh productive years left in them organizations currently do not target or pursue this cohort very actively but think about it they are the largest part of the latent workforce and they are seasoned employees they have uh experience and now the compensation actually is not a bigger driver for them what they want is a good title and to be able to contribute to have a purpose uh in the job that they are going to do while traditionalists still remain the prime focus for all the companies the employers must look beyond them and try to create a talent pool which is more effective in the long term let's look at the four actions that mckinsey and company suggest for a company to deal with attrition number 1 to sharpen their traditional employee value proposition what does that include the basic motivators a uh, good career path title compensation benefit good bosses and overall prestige number 2 build non traditional value proposition around flexibility mental and behavioral health strong company culture and different forms of career progressions number 3 broaden the sourcing techniques the five personas highlight that these workers are not all reachable uh through traditional sourcing touch points hence there is a need to tailor the sourcing strategies towards different types of workers last but not the least job stickiness could be increased by investing in more meaning more belonging and stronger team and other relational ties for our discussion we know that these attributes work tremendously for four cohorts for the fifth cohort that is the traditionalist also these attributes can make a difference i'll tell you how it increases the inertia if the traditionalists are accustomed to the workplace or there is a sense of belonging they will not go to the rivals just for a little bit increase in the pay 
So this was all about McKinsey's five worker personas and their ways to deal with attrition. Tell us about your worker persona in the comment section. Next time when you're dealing with your employees, try to identify their worker personas so that you can use the right motivators to inspire them to do their job correct and retain them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you do not miss out on any such interesting content in future. See you in the next video. Until then, take super good care of yourself and stay healthy. Bye.